Hey guys, just getting out of the July sun here. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. I'm down here, unfortunately, where I used to have a nice lush green forest. And now, as you can tell, I have a bit of a runway that was created by a tornado. But hey, things could be worse. What I'm gonna get up to today is I'm just sort of doing an inventory of what I've got left down here to see whether I have any logs that I need to get out of here for saw milling. For the most part, I think I got this licked. I think I got everything out of here I need to. And so what's left and what you're seeing is ultimately going to become uh, firewood. Now, I don't know when I'm gonna get around to that because I'm busy enough as it is. So probably gonna leave a bunch of this stuff on the ground or at least for the, for the next several months, leave it on the ground. And then maybe when it gets a little bit colder, I'll see about getting down here and uh, getting it piled up and out of here so I can go split it and make wood out of it. Firewood that is. What you see behind you is essentially the leftovers of that tornado and you guys have seen this in a few videos it is a bit disheartening but i gotta tell you it is going to breathe some new life into the area i had a huge conifer stand here a lot of balsam firs a lot of uh, a lot of spruce the odd cherry tree the odd hardwood tree and if you look down here we'll just walk in there a little bit if you look down here this is this is essentially this type of bush here this is essentially what was back behind me. So we're going through a bit of a transition here and probably won't take long with the sun beating down and assuming we get some rain, probably won't take long for some of these younger trees and saplings to, uh, to take off and start that whole successional period again. And I'm looking forward to that because I hate looking at it, to be honest with you. So I figured what we'll do today is we'll head out to the sawmill so I can uh, start putting some positive vibes back into the, the wood I got out of here. There's a lot of negativity whenever trees come down and the forest sort of changes from what it was to something else. So I'm going to put some positive spin on things <clears throat> and uh, make some lumber. So let's head on up the hill. I'm just sort of down here thinking about how I can get my tractor down here. Maybe some of you guys have ideas. You see that, uh, see that hill there? That's where I drive my ATV and snowmobile down. But if we look up at the top there, it's probably a good... Oh, well, it's probably a good 20 foot vertical rise and it's quite steep. So I got to figure a way to get my tractor down here. So um, I'm just down here sort of scanning and figuring that bit out. I don't know how that's going to happen, but it's probably the only way to get down here and, you know, really get a good haul road put in. A, when I say haul road, I mean sort of a smaller trail, haul trail. So if you guys have any ideas, put it down below. But uh, here's what we're left with. Let's go do something positive today. So we can make something out of, uh, oh, let's say a bad situation. Here we go. Now, just before I head out to the mill, there's something I want to mention to you guys. There's sort of a balance between effort and reward. The reward is the beautiful lumber you get out of the wood. The effort is what you put in to get that wood up to the sawmill to make into lumber. You see some logs in there, and by logs, I mean trees that haven't been cut into logs yet. Those are going to be one heck of an effort to get up that hill, out the trail, down the other trail, through past the creek and up to the sawmill quite the effort what you have to do is weigh that effort versus the lumber you're going to get from it in my case that particular tree in there just happens to be one i'm looking at that tree is not going to give me that much lumber and in fact i've already had a little bit of a look at it and part of the bottom is rotten and so that in particular is not going to be worth the effort for me so it's going to stay right there other trees like the big one you saw behind me you guys remember that big tree the big conifer that went all the way up the hill. You saw me cut that in one of my other videos. That thing is so big, it gave me a lot of lumber. And so that was worth the reward or worth the effort for the reward. Okay, let's talk. Let's go on out to the sawmill. And as I mentioned, this is one of the big hills that I need to figure a way to get down and then back up again with my tractor. If we have a look at it right now, it's even a bit of a grunt just to get up it on foot. Okay, see down there? Doesn't look like much, but honestly, I don't think I'm getting back up with my tractor if I get down it. So, uh, yeah, let me know what we're going to do to get that figured out so I can make a bit of a useful, useful trail down there. Anyways, let's go get in the golf cart and make our way out of the sawmill. Nope. One more little side story I want to tell you guys about. And what that is, is uh, selecting logs for the sawmill. And I already talked about this, but this is a prime example of a log that I was going to make into lumber until I rolled it over and I saw these holes. You guys see those there? These holes are probably, oh, another big bug on me. These holes are probably from a woodpecker or something similar. If you see this, you don't wanna mill this log. This log will have insects in it, hence why the woodpeckers were probably poking holes in it. 
And so you're going to get cutting into this, using up your time, effort, and material, and you're going to find that the lumber is not as plentiful or not as bountiful as you thought. And for any of you who are interested, I like working with motors. And uh, you guys have probably seen other videos of me tinker with things. Well, I put the wrenches to this thing, my golf cart. What is this? Uh, I don't know what it is, 85 or something. Club car. But anyways, I got this thing just ripping. So uh, yeah, here we are, and as I mentioned, I'm going to cut some wood today. Some of these big logs are right from where I just showed you. Remember that big tree I was just talking about? Well, there it is there in several sections. One thing you've got to take note of, and I've sort of learned the hard way with this, is to really scan the log before you actually start cutting it. If you miss scanning it back where you dragged it out from, well, you got one more chance to do it. What you really got to pay attention to is the quality of the log. I've been burned before and in actuality see this piece right back here this is a prime example of a log that i put a ton of effort in to not only limit cut it drag it up that steep hill but then also drag it out here and load it onto my sawmill and begin cutting it i put a lot of effort into that and i got burned all that effort was for naught because as soon as i cut into it i think probably the first cut all these ants started coming out i could have caught that if i was a little more picky when I was scanning my logs before bringing it out here. Check this out. Of course, all the ants are gone now, but uh, I dragged this out here because I didn't want the ants getting all around my sawmill there. But this is what happened. I cut the log, my very first cut, and just have a look at that. And it goes probably halfway down the log that I brought out here. This could have been prevented by looking at the end of the log after I cut it. See right here? See that... Uh, you know, it's, it's not it's not firm, it's, it's kind of soft there. Well, that's where the ants were probably traveling up and down through all the different layers of the wood. Same thing over here, same thing down here. Bit soft there. Looking for stuff like that would really prevent a lot of headache. And to be honest with you, after that encounter, I paid a bit more attention to the logs. Unfortunately, I paid a bit more attention too late. Have a look. This log here came from the same general area I hauled this all the way up that big hill with my tractor or maybe even my ATV and I got it out here and as you can tell the ants are crawling around and they probably are right in there right now this one here is now not going to be lumber even though I dragged it all the way out here that's then going to end up as firewood or who knows what I'm going to do with that so pay special attention if you see logs with those holes in the end or it's soft or you know there's little uh, marks in it for oh gosh that was a big spider holy smokes that was a big one what the what on earth is oh my gosh you guys see that holy i don't know if i can talk after that that scared me good um yeah what's he talking about that really scared me good it's probably crawling around right now anyways uh what was i talking about Oh yeah, watch out for the holes in the log. If you see big holes, not only on the outside, just checking for spiders, not only on the outside, but um, on the ends, that's probably a sign of either ants, or if they are on the outside, woodpeckers, which are going after things like insects and possibly ants. So don't use those logs. Looking right here, this log, look where it is. It's probably about number three to go on the mill, right? But look at, see that hole down the center? See that hole right there? See that hole there and that hole right there? It was covered a bit by the dirt when I was skidding it. But that log is probably full of ants. That's a shame. Look at the length of it. Look at the diameter. I'd probably get a lot of lumber out of that. You really got to pay attention to that. Because that is now going to not be useful to me despite all the effort. If I have a look at some of the other logs, some of the other logs look good. You can see here, nice solid one, nice solid one here, solid, etc. But especially some of the larger ones, when you're getting down near the trunk of the tree, if you see those holes, get rid of it. You're not going to be using it for lumber, and if you do, you're going to end up dragging it off the sawmill in a hurry like I did with that ant-filled one. All right, let's shake off the heebie-jeebies here, grab my gear out of here, and uh, let's cut a log or two. And hopefully that spider does not reappear. 
those are things things of uh those are things that nightmares are made of so uh yeah let's get her fired up and uh, i don't know what i'm gonna cut i got a nice piece of poplar here i'm making some trim and you guys can see that behind me here i'm making some trim in all various widths and so uh this is just drying out here but maybe we'll cut that poplar and you guys can see why poplar is such a beautiful one for uh making like floor trim or door trim or window trim or baseboard trim so yeah let's talk let's get down to it okay first things first here in central ontario despite it being july the date get some of that on these are like those wet naps you guys remember those i don't know if they still have them kfc and places like that uh when i was a youngster used to give out these you wipe your face off after your chicken and gravy Nothing like having a good chemical rub down, right? <coughs> That's some awful stuff. Okay. Nextly. Is that a word? Nextly? I think so. Smokes. There's a lot of bugs around here. I'm not a big fan, if you guys haven't noticed. I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the big bugs. I actually... Uh, I actually uh, leave this brush out here to wipe it down even though we don't have big stuff like some of you guys do I know some of you guys have snakes and spiders that'll probably kill you not here but still not, it doesn't make it any better if you guys are wondering why this is here it's just so that I don't forget that it's um, on one of the notches if I'm cutting horizontally which I have been the last little while I actually just put a zip tie there and that just makes it so I don't forget um, and put it on the wrong setting nothing would be worse than putting it on the first notch say i was cutting some lap siding on the first notch and leaving it there and then cutting what i think is horizontally for the next you know 10 12 logs and it ends up being slightly uh slightly uh tilted so that would that would not be good that's why that's there anyways yeah back there we'll fire this thing up bugs everywhere just not feeling it today that one got me a big one got me off my off my mark a little bit real nice poplar okay all right normally i'd put some bigger log stops up there but i think i'm gonna let the good times roll and take a bit of a risk here Let's get this one off. Easy. Hold on. Oh, I think we made it. Whoa. I think it's heavier than I thought. Get up there. Things fighting me a little bit. Okay. All right. Whew. It's like a nice log, minus the dust and dirt. Unfortunately, skidding these in the not winter time has led to this. Many of you guys have suggested some good ideas, getting a wagon and putting on a trailer or something similar to that. I like those ideas. Getting some sort of a log arch is another good idea. Thank you for suggesting that. We'll see what the future brings. Might get into one of those ideas soon. Okay, good enough. Where'd my tape go? Let's, uh, let's get an idea what we're dealing with here. I usually start somewhere near the top end, the small end. Uh, what am I looking at diameter wise? About 10 inches. 10 inch based on my Get in there based on my experience would say i'm going to cut two inches off the top to start then two inches off the bottom be left with a six inch by six inch cant that's the goal let's start off with an eight inch cut
Well guys, I think that's it. At least for the poplar. You guys can see behind me, I got a good little bit of poplar here that I cut from that one single log. What I cut is pretty much, I think I cut the odd one inch board, but I pretty much I cut three quarter inch by four and a half inch pieces. I'm gonna use this poplar for a baseboard trim. Sometimes I might uh, might even squeak out a few window casings or door casings, but for the most part, four and a half inch by three quarter inch is what I start with as a rough cut for my poplar. I'll run that through my little thickness planer, bring it down to probably five eighths, uh, probably finish off about four and a quarter by five eighths. So that'll give me something good to work with. Reason I really like this poplar is it's a very utilitarian hardwood. So this stuff is uh, very stable. It's also a little dent resistant compared to say a pine or a spruce or fir or something of that sort. So this, uh, this poplar works really, really well for this. It also works really, really well for firewood. And so I have a bit of a dilemma, often when I'm out cutting this stuff, whether to use it here or in the fireplace. Anyways, I'm gonna keep cutting for a little bit longer. I appreciate all you guys watching. Questions at all with anything I'm doing here, comments, concerns, you guys know where it goes. Come on back next time. One thing's for certain, there will certainly be bugs. There will certainly be some heat because it's still July and there's probably going to be some sawdust. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.